Welcome to Financial Statements Made Easy. This ebook was developed to help you understand your cash flow, balance sheet, and profit and loss statements that will help you increase the success of your business. This video is intended to give you a quick overview of the business financial statements we have provided. It is not intended to give financial or legal advice. Please seek out a licensed professional for that. And please read the ebook in its entirety to get a full understanding of your business financials. At this time, we're going to ask you to please open the Excel document that came with your download and let's go over it. If you do not have the document open at this time, please pause the video here and open it. Accurately tracking financial data is not only critical for running the day to day operations of your small business, but it is also essential when seeking funding from lenders or investors to take your business to the next level. In addition, keeping tabs of your financials, financials can help you ensure the products and services are priced right, identify what margins you have, determine your cash flow, and make filing taxes easier. With that said, we have provided you with five Excel spreadsheets that contain the three basic financial statements that are important for your small business. Those basic financials are cash flow statement, balance sheet, and your profit and loss statement. As you can see at the bottom of the document, your profit and loss statement has been expanded into the three categories that you will find in a profit and loss statement. That's revenues, cost of sales, and expenses. We have broke it down this way for it so it can be easier for you to track these items and you get a better understanding of a profit and loss statement. Let's review the cash flow statement briefly. The cash flow statement that you have received in your business kit consists of the category, the service, the price, daily projections, the revenues that are done weekly, monthly, and yearly. The cash flow sheet is fully editable, which allows you to go in and make any change on it, and it will automatically change all the numbers. For example, the Beauty Salon Business Startup Kit has a category of haircut and styling. The service is men's haircut. The price, example, is $45. To edit that to your regional price, you just need to put in the number that, to change that, press enter, and the number which will automatically change for weekly, monthly, and yearly. If you want to change your daily projections, all you need to do is go into the category, change the projection, press enter, and your monthly your weekly, monthly, and yearly revenues will also change, as will the total amount for your operations. Let's get into the cash flow statement so you can get a better understanding of it. The cash flow statement measures how well a company generates cash to pay its debt. It is important to note that the cash flow statement is distinct from the income statement and the balance sheet because it does not include the amount of future income and outgoing cash that has been recorded on credit. Therefore, cash is not the same as net income, which on the income statement and balance sheet includes cash sales and sales made on credit. The three components of a cash flow statement are cash flow from operations, as we discussed, your categories, your services, and your price. Second area is cash flow from investing activities. As you can see, these are not filled out because we don't know which investment activities you will have. You can work with these once you get the understanding of them and go with your accountant should you have these activities. And the third section is cash flow from financial activities, and we will go over those. Yes, there is a fourth category. However, we will, not, we will not discuss it in this video. However, if you'd like to know more, please completely read the financial ebook provided with this video. Let's go over the cash flow from operating activities. 
The cash flow from operating activities is an accounting item that indicates the amount of money a company brings in from the ongoing regular business activity, such as manufacturing and selling goods or providing a service, as you can see in front of you. The next section is the cash flow from investing activities. This line item contains the sum of the changes that a company experiences during a designated reporting period in investment gains or losses, as well as from any new investments in or sales of fixed assets. Fixed assets are assets that are purchased for long-term use and are not likely to be converted quickly into cash, such as land, buildings, and equipment. Items that may be included in the investment activity lines include the following. Purchase of a fixed asset, a building, a land, is a negative cash flow. The sale of the fixed asset, the building, the land, is going to be a positive cash flow. Purchase of an investment interest is a negative cash flow. The sale of the investment is a positive cash flow. The lending of money is a negative cash flow. The collection of the loan is a positive. And proceeds of insurance settlement related to a damage or fixed asset is a positive cash flow. The cash flows from investing activities line is one of the more important items on the statement of cash flows. It can be a substantial source or use of cash that significantly offsets any positive or negative amounts of cash flow generated from operations. The next section that I'd like to discuss is the cash flow from financing act, uh, activities. The cash flow from financing activities measures the movement of cash between the company and its owners and creditors. It indicates the means by which a company raises cash to maintain or grow its operations. A company's sources of capital can be from either debt or equity. When a company takes on debt, it typically does so by taking a loan from the bank. The company must then make interest payments to the bank to compensate them for loaning their money. The items that may be included in the financial activity line items are the sale of a stock, which is a positive cash flow, repurchase of company stock, which would be a negative cash flow, the, the issuance of debt, such as a bond, a positive cash flow, the repayment of the debt, a negative cash flow, the payment of a dividend, a negative cash flow, and a donor contribution, restricted long-term use, is a positive cash flow. The cash flows from financing activity line items is one of the more important items on the statement of cash flow because it can represent a substantial source or use of cash that significantly offsets any positive or negative amounts of cash flow generated from operations. On the other hand, smaller organizations like yourself that have no debt to pay dividends may find that it has no financial activities in the reporting period. And so it does not need to include this line items in a statement of cash flows. The bottom line is the cash flow statement is a valuable measure of strengths, a pop prof, I'm sorry, of strengths and profitability and the long-term outlook for a company. The cash flow statement can help determine whether a company has enough liquidity or cash to pay its expenses. A company can use a cash flow statement to predict future cash flow, which helps with matters of budgeting. Next, I would like to go over the balance sheet. The balance sheet you have in front of you is not filled out. The reason for it is because you haven't yet put in, got your company active and made any cash or investment but we're still gonna go over it so you understand where to put the categories when you do start making, when you do open up your company. A company's balance sheet is also known as a statement of financial position. It reveals the firm's assets, liabilities, and owner's equities net worth. The balance sheet together with the income statement and cash flow statement make up the cornerstone of any company's financial statements. As a business owner, it is important that you understand how the balance sheet is structured, how to analyze it, and how to read it. Let's explain how the balance sheet works. The balance sheet is divided into two parts that based on the following equation must equal each other or balance each other out. The main formula behind balance sheet is assets equal 
assets equals liabilities and owner's equity. This means that assets or the means used to operate the company are balanced by the company's financial obligations, along with the equity investments brought into the company and its returned earnings. Assets are what a company uses to operate its business, while its liabilities and equity are two sources that support those assets. Owner's equity is the amount of money initially invested into the company plus any return earnings and it represents a source of funding for the business. It is important to note that a balance sheet is a snapshot of the company's financial position at a single point in time. These are the types of assets you will find on your balance sheet. Current assets. Current assets have a lifespan of one year or less, meaning they can be converted easily into cash. This asset includes cash and cash equivalents like accounts receivable and inventory. Cash, the most fundamental of current assets, also includes non-restrictive bank accounts and checks. Cash equivalents are very safe assets that can be readily converted into cash. U.S. Treasuries are one such example. Accounts receivables consist of short-term obligations owed to the company by its clients. Companies often sell products or services to companies on credit. These obligations are held in a current asset account until they are paid off by the clients. Lastly, inventory represents the raw materials, work in progress, goods, and the company's finished goods. Depending on the company, the exact makeup of the inventory account will differ. For example, a manufacturing firm may carry many raw materials, while a retail firm carries none. The makeup of a retailer's inventory typically consists of goods purchased from manufacturers and wholesalers. Non-current assets, fixed assets. Fixed assets are assets that are not turned into cash easily, are expected to be turned into cash within one year and or have a lifespan of more than one year. They can refer to tangible assets such as machinery, computers, buildings, and land. Fixed assets can also be intangible, intangible assets such as goodwill, patents, and copyrights. While these assets are not physical in nature, they are often the resources that can make or break a company. The value of a brand name, for instance, should not be underestimated. Depreciation is calculated and deducted from most of these assets over its useful lives. Now let's discuss the different liabilities. On the other side of the balance sheet are the liabilities. These are the financial obligations a company owes to outside parties. Like assets, they can be both current and long-term. Long-term liabilities are debts and other non-debt financial obligations which are due after a period of at least one year from the date of the balance sheet. Current liabilities are the company's liabilities that will come due or must be paid within one year. This includes both short-term borrowing, such as accounts payable, along with current portions of longer-term borrowing, such as the latest interest payment on a 10-year loan. Current liabilities. Accounts payable. This is money owed to the supplier. Accrued wages. These are owed to the employee. Bank account overdraft, overdrafts. These are short-term advances made by, made by the bank for overdrafts. Income tax payable. These are taxes owed to the government that have not yet been paid. As you read the ebook on financial statements made easy, they will go over each one of these statements for you to give you a better understanding and how to apply them. The last section that we will go over on the balance sheet is the shareholder slash owner's equity. Owner's equity is the initial amount of money invested into the business. If at the end of the fiscal year, a company decides to reinvest its net earnings into the company, after taxes, these return earnings will be transferred from the income statement into the balance sheet 
and into the owner's equity account. This account represents the company's total net worth. For the balance sheet to balance, total assets on one side must equal total liabilities plus owner, owner's equity on the other. Now let's move to the profit and loss statement, which consists of revenues, cost of sales, and owner expense. A profit and loss statement, sometimes called an income statement, is a business report that shows net income as the difference between revenue and expenses. If a business has revenues of 250000 and expenses of 150000 its net income or net revenue on the profit and loss statement would be $100,000. Let's go over how the profit and loss statement will be used by your business. A profit and loss statement is used by businesses in three ways. It is used as one of the financial statements in a business plan for the purpose of showing the profits of the business over time. In this case, the profit and loss statement might be a pro forma projected document for an application for a startup business loan. A profit and loss statement can also be used as a tool for an internal analyst of the health of the business. The percentages of each expense to gross income are useful in this type analysis. Some profit and loss statements compare figures for sales and expenses to budgeted figures to show whether projected goals have been met. Have been met. Here we have it under trends. And you will get to see that up under revenues, your cost, and your expenses. So you can follow um, those projected goals. Profit and loss statements are also useful for tax preparation. A detailed profit and loss statement can be prepared for an entire year, ending on the date of the end of the fiscal year, as you see above, fiscal year, Jan 2019. And it is used by by the tax preparer to compile the income and expenses for the business's tax return. Many businesses create a profit and loss statement that matches the income and expense category of Schedule C, the tax return filed by a small business owner as part of their personal tax return. For the sake of the forms that Right Step has got for you, we have you focusing on separate breakdown, unlike your tax return, so that you get a better understanding of your revenues your cost of sales, and your expenses. You can snap to see one immediately, and then you can also track to know which revenue stream is giving you the better income and what is its projection and how is it going. So we feel this form for a startup business is best for you to get on the right foot. Again, on your revenue statement, you will see revenue, cost of sales and expenses. All of that, all three of those are necessary for a proper profit and loss statement. Revenue is the money an entity receives from the sales of good or services, which we have talked about over in your cash flow statement. These are the products that determine your revenue. We have broken down the revenue streams for you to track which stream is most productive and less productive, allowing you to make adjustments. Let's go over the tab that's called cost of sales. The cost of goods sold. Businesses need to track all the costs that are directly involved in the producing their products for sale, in addition to other operational costs. These direct costs are called the cost of goods sold and this figure appears in the company's profit and loss statement. It's also an important part of the information the company must report on its tax return. The cost of goods sold and other business costs must be calculated so that your business can offset them against the revenue. It generates and reports on the tax return. Claiming all the company's expenses ensures that you will, you will only pay taxes on the net income from the business or the income that's left after all expenses have been covered. Understanding what's covered under the cost of goods sold on the income statement will help you make sure that you don't miss any tax deductions. What is a cost of goods sold? A cost of goods sold 
is sometimes referred to as the cost of sales and refers to the production cost for production for products manufactured and sold or produced and resold by the company. These costs are the expense of the business and they reduce the revenue the company makes from selling its products. For example, say your business assembles a complete widget from various inventory parts and sells it online for $15. The parts of the widget and the direct labor required to assemble them cost $10. The $10 cost is deducted from the widget sale price to determine the gross profit it generates and the taxes on that profit the IRS allows you to include a variety of costs in the calculations. Gross profit. Cost of goods sold is determined annually by showing changes in the company's balance of goods or inventories from the beginning to the end of the fiscal year. And it is included in the company's profit and loss statement. The profit and loss statement information is included in the business tax return and used to calculate adjusted gross income as well as in net income for tax purpose. What's included in the cost of goods sold? The cost of goods sold includes the direct cost of producing the product or the wholesale price of goods resold and the direct labor costs to produce the product specifically. Specifically, it can include the cost of raw materials, the cost of items purchased for resale, the cost of parts used to construct the product. The cost of goods sold also includes other direct costs such as labor to produce the product, supplies used in manufacturing or sell, shipping costs, cost of containers, freight and overhead costs directly related to the manufacture or product activity like rent and utilities for the manufacturing facility. Finally, cost of goods sold includes indirect costs such as distribution costs and sales force costs that are also directly related to the product the company sells. How the cost of goods sold affects your business income? Because cost of goods sold is a cost of doing business, it is a business expense. As cost of goods sold increases, it reduces the company's net income or profit. That may result in paying less tax because your business has less income, but it also means the business doesn't make as much money overall, so it pays to keep cost of goods sold efficiently managed and increase profit. To help you with that, you can also see, you can add in your cost of goods, but you can also see the trends that you get throughout the year um, so you can follow that trend to make sure you're making as much profit as possible. Finally, let's talk about the expense tab. Operating expenses are those expenditures that a business incurs to engage in any activity not directly associated with the production of goods and services. These expenditures are the same as selling, general, and administrative expenses. The selling, general, and administrative expenses, also known as SG&A, is comprised of all operating expenses of a business that are not included in the cost of goods sold. Management should maintain trite control over these costs since they increase the break-even point of the business. To learn all of the departments that are involved in the SGA, please go to the ebook so you can get a full description and a good understanding of your of your expenses knowing your numbers will put you light years ahead of many small business owners financial statements tell the story that you can write about your business and your future fortunes. The numbers are the only means available to evaluate a company's financial performance. Good luck. The ebook should help you really understand your numbers and get your business off to a good start. We hope this Excel form will help you see trends, let you easily put in um, your numbers, and gives you a quick and easy place where you can take a quick snapshot of how well your business is going.
Good luck.